Hey there, everybody. It's Chris Yost here at Wesley. Today we're going to be reading from John's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 17 through 37. This is the uh, where we left off uh, last week with the uh, Jesus hearing about Lazarus, his friend, uh, the brother of Mary and Martha, who has uh, become gravely ill and apparently had died. And uh, so now Jesus and his disciples have journeyed uh, four days after hearing that news, and we'll pick up the story. When Jesus arrived, he found Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And then she heard, and when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? This is another one of the stories that uh, those of you who have been followers of Jesus for a while are quick to jump ahead. Today we need to stay. We need to stay right here. Lazarus had died four days ago when Jesus arrives. That was four days of grief, four days uh, without having the consolation <clears throat> of Jesus being present Four days where people around were doing the best they could. Um, after all, there were people who, um, in this case, when they label the Jews, it's not just simply religious group. That That is a group of people who are there, who actually, in John's gospel, are in opposition to Jesus. But they're all there. They're all trying the best they can to help. Um, this section in verse 25 I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And then she says, yes. Um, friends, do remember, this is the whole point of John's gospel. So that you can believe. So that you will know these things. Um, resurrection is a lot less about a person's body and what happens to it. Resurrection is a person of Jesus the Christ. Resurrection is a life that we have now. Um, remember our two parallel worlds we've been talking about? The idea here is that we do live in the midst of, <clears throat> excuse me, a, a kind of a decaying world, and yet we have life. That's why we talk about resurrection is not just something that happens at the end of time. Matter of fact, as Martha had assumed, um, it is not something that simply happens someday, but it's a present reality. When Martha meets Jesus, she's face to face with resurrection. It's not something that is waited for. It is something that is here. 
That's the first thing I offer to you today. Do you know resurrection? It is here. The second big thing, um, as a matter of fact, I, I personally will say this was a passage that kept me from becoming a stoic person. Uh, reading after, after reading Mark's gospel, I thought Jesus was almost aloof. In other words, he couldn't be concerned with all of this mess. Um, he was here to kind of do a job, and then he was moving through. He was moving on. Um, some of John's gospel could lead you to believe that. But it's this passage, verse 35. And in the New Revised Standard Version actually says Jesus began to weep. But in, in Greek, it's Jesus wept. That's it. It's the shortest verse in the Bible. It's important for us, especially tomorrow. I know some of you are wanting to jump ahead. It is not... Uh, Jesus weeps, or, or, or rather God's compassion is not muted by what's going to happen. In other words, I believe that Jesus knew what was about to happen. But it's the, 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 the grief itself that moves Jesus. It is seeing you and I in our places of discord and difficulty and suffering that does grieve the heart of God even if it's going to turn out okay, even if everything's going to be fine, even if God knows everything that's going to happen, the fact of the matter is, your hurt is God's hurt. God is not disaffected by humanity. God is intimately affected by our experience. We'll say more about that, I'm sure, down the road. But I just want you to know, God is aware, God sees, um, and God knows. It, the, the, your grief, your emotions, your sense of well-being is unto itself a concern of God's, and it moves God. Anyway, Jesus wept. Mm, what does it mean for God incarnate to weep with us? Anyway. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this telling message and thank you for not being uh, that Zeus-looking character up on some big throne and not really caring what's happening to your people. But rather, you see us. You see us in our celebrations and you celebrate. You see us in our mourning and you mourn. Um, and yet, God, you lead us into a future, uh, a future of hope and possibility. Thank you, God, uh, for, you know what, introducing us to resurrection, to being people of resurrection, no matter what else. In Jesus' name, amen.